The IPO market got a huge pop this week as the cloud-based management company Snowflake had the biggest public offering of the year and the largest software IPO ever. It was the largest IPO since 2008, and it was up 111 percent on its debut. Joining me right now to talk about what that says for investing today and how to allocate capital is the founder of the Bonson Group, David Bonson. And David, it is always a pleasure. Great to see you this weekend. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me, Maria. Look, I know the cloud is hot in terms of uh, markets and, and growth, but was that all that Snowflake was about? What's your take on the incredible performance we saw this week of this IPO Snowflake, a Warren Buffett company? It, it had nothing to do with how hot the cloud is. It had to do with a bubble and euphoria and something that's about to blow up in a lot of people's faces. And I, I say it dramatically because it needs to be dramatic. This is deja vu all over again. Uh, we all lived through this in the late 90s going into 2000. And this company is trading at 156 times sales, not earnings. OK, so if they have no expenses whatsoever for 156 years and give you all of the money back in 156 years, you can get your investment back. Now, obviously, they're going to grow a bunch along the way. My point is we made fun of valuations that were at 100 times sales and because those were extravagant. So this is a bubble and this is not going to end well. Yeah, well, what, it definitely did show you, though, that the liquidity is there. The IPO market seems to be hot again. Maybe that particular name uh, you can question in terms of that 111 percent move. I get that. And the fact that it's based on sales, not even earnings. That's a great point. But what about the liquidity around it? The fact that IPOs have been doing well. Does that tell does that show some help for the uh, the liquidity? And, and interest in this market. Well, there, there is ample liquidity, but we really don't need the IPO market to confirm that, right? I mean, the stock market did very well post-financial crisis for eight, nine, ten years with a lot of liquidity, but with the IPO market actually not doing well. I think, unfortunately, the IPO market sometimes can just be a, ref, a referendum on maybe a, a sentiment and some of the euphoria that investors fall into. The liquidity is there. The corporate bond market shows us that. The high yield spreads show us that. The Fed is going to make sure there's liquidity sloshing around uh, capital markets for quite some time. Let me ask you about the backdrop in terms of the economic growth story. What are you expecting? We saw uh, under a million, 800,000 uh, jobless claims this week. What's your take on where we are in this recovery? The thing that we keep telling clients, Maria, is that it isn't so much about where the COVID news goes to dictate how the economy does. It's where the uh, policy response ends up being. That's the hard to predict element. We see cases dropping. We see hospitalizations really significantly dropping. And yet you have states like New York and California that have some of the best metrics, the lowest positivity rate, and yet the most stringent restrictions. So the economy is hard to sort of forecast right now. The, the elements of the economy that were most hurt by the COVID lockdowns they continue to struggle, and I think a lot of that is policy-driven. We need these cities to reopen. We need more people to participate in economic activity to feel that there is a uh, continued acceleration. Yeah, well, look at this uh, census data that we got this week where it basically showed that before COVID-19 showed up, income inequality was actually narrowing. David, you had the lowest earners in the uh, whole income scale seeing their wages go up much more than the rich. And I think that the higher wages showed real growth and impact from the president's policies, tax cuts and deregulation. Uh, I think it's really uh, worthwhile to mention that the Census Bureau reported this this week. The median household income in 2019 grew 6.8 percent. That is a big number. Yes, you had a big uh, move up in the median household income. And as you pointed out, the bottom decile of wage earners had the highest percentage increase. We already know we had the lowest unemployment in uh, African-American demographic and the Hispanic uh, unemployment was the lowest it had been. All of those metrics were exactly going in the right direction. The problem with the COVID moment 
is the worst impact it's had has been in the bottom decile earners. They went after the service workers. They went after people that wear a uniform to work. And it's one of the reasons why I've been screaming for New York City to reopen and other places like that. Those bottom wage earners are the ones hurting. All right. We will leave it there. David Bonson, great to have you this weekend. Thank you so much. David Bonson from the Bonson Group joining us. 